today we have a, a Gravely. I don't really see too many of these. In fact, this may be the second one I've ever seen um, that has some problems. I don't know what's going on. I see there is a repair sticker on it. The carb is completely missing. The plastics, however, are there. Um, probably missing the nuts, but whatever. Fuel is off, but is there fuel inside? Yes, there is. Um, put this back on. Is there oil? So, the person that got this, I think, got it from the repair shop as a sale or free or whatnot. So, the oil is full and actually pretty clean. So, that's good. So let's jack it up and do a couple tests. So it's going to be kind of an interesting video on this one. So this is going to be a video about finding an interesting location to get machines to work on. Now, like I said, they got this from the auto repair or the small engine repair. A lot of times the ones that they get, people don't want to pay for them. They ask if they want to recycle them or whatnot. They say yes. So now they're here. Yeah, so we're good to go. I think the person said they paid like 20 bucks for this. So that's pretty good, um, at the very least for parts. A lot of them will because to repair it, because they will buy a legitimate Subaru carb and those are like 60 bucks. So what ends up happening next is it's just too expensive for them to really consider it feasible to sell to fix when they could be fixing a lawn tractor for you know maybe they're gonna charge like four or five hundred dollars they're gonna get like 120 out of this that's not including the parts that's barely one person's labor barely and they're not gonna make any money so they'll sell for as much as they can get off their lot Real estate is also money to them. So here we go. This is a clone carb, which I know, and there's already a gasket there, by the way. Which I know, it's not the best. I get it, I prefer not to as well. But here's the thing about a clone carb. They're really not all that bad. I know, I know. But think about it, for this application, this is a clone engine. Yes, it's a Subaru. I will give you that. But it's a clone of a Honda, more or less. They just put a little bit of a difference on there. It's all made in China. It's all roughly the same. So, my point being is, is it really that much different? No, it's not. I do not like that, though. That seems like it's going to fall out. You know? What's stopping it from falling out? How is it supposed to be like that? But that doesn't make any sense. And right now, should be closed, but it's not. Over here, it's also not closed. Over here, it's closed. I'm gonna do a little research on this. Okay, good news or bad news? Good news is I found out what's going on. Bad news is I found out what's going on. The carb I got, mm, basically it's wrong. I mean, it's right, but it's wrong. The piece right there, the butterfly, I suppose, actually is the wrong type. This one has like, supposed to have the connection right around here 
and then like a little piece that loops over it that way it keeps the hook on this hook now what you see here is a piece of 332nd filler wire aluminum because well it's a lot easier to bend aluminum than bending steel which is what this one's made out of at least i think it's steel it's pretty hard might be some unknown mixture but what i'm going to do is right now it's set to close and when it warms up it's set maybe not hmm Let me do a little exploring. That uh, false alarm, the little piece on top was hitting the body of the carburetor. So anyway, I'm hoping that's gonna change it. If not, we're actually gonna have to buy one. Um, the reason why I did it is because uh, the cheapest one I could find is like 80 bucks. And if I have to, I have to. Um, I can get into the scenario why I don't want to, but let's just say I don't want to do that because of monetary reasons and expedience reasons but like i said if you have to do it you have to do it so the way that auto choke is working it should be good to go i'm going to put the cover on and see if this actually turns on and runs appropriately of expedience i didn't show draining the fuel and whatnot but fuel is on new fuel is added about 95% sure this is not going to work and if it does work it's going to run lean the reason why I say that is every time I did it I pulled on it manually <laughs> but um, it would always end up about one out of three times getting stuck I don't know if that's just because of the aluminum I don't think so I just think it's because it's not being used at well how it's been to um, I tried turning the butterfly around it doesn't quite work any other way so we're kind of stuck with it part is if this does work this can be experimented just mainly the engine and then I'm just going to because I didn't modify this carb any I'm just gonna send this car back by the actual one and go from there so let this be a lesson sometimes you can't just get the cheap one even though technically this is the engine for it it's not the right application for the choke for it but the everything should be ready. Let's give it a yank. Like I said, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be running lean right now. Fuel is on. I even put a new air filter in there too. Um, excuse me. Give it a little of that. Definitely has compression, that's for sure. Hmm. Doesn't appear to be leaking. Had loose and give it a try again. 
be returning this car but anyway so I'm not a hundred percent sure what was going on I double checked everything tightened up a little bit took the bowl off it was clean um, yeah so let's give it a try again this cable though does feel a little tight but it's moving but when we put down the carb cleaner though it worked just fine so oh, here we go So that is with the fuel cap very loose. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this around or probably just take it outside and let it run for like, I don't know, 10 minutes or so and see if it stops. What I'm thinking is happening is this. Perhaps the fuel cap was on too tight or it was just cutting off the uh, I don't want to say circulation, but like the, the vent. It's that way the fuel will actually come and get into the carb. But other than that, everything seems to be fine. Um, like I said, the oil is good and full. Gas is good. Blade is good. With the exception of this carb, I think we're pretty good. Um, I'm going to run and then I'll bring it back. I'll do like a cool final discussion. Okay, well, I let it run for about 15 or 20 minutes and there's no problem. Um, in addition to that, I let it run for about a minute and then I let it stop, let it cool a little bit for another minute, pull it again, let it run, so on and so forth. I did that about four or five times. I wanted to see if it would stick into the choke position and it's not. So, so far it's pretty good. Um, I don't really like the idea of having aluminum filler rod in there because aluminum is a little soft, but um, I think I might take like some plain steel. Maybe stainless, I don't know, a uh, filler rod, make one that's a little bit shorter because I don't really want to damage the original one because it's the original, it's my point of reference. Not wanting to ruin my reference. Just gonna leave it the way it is. I am already started um, making a new one, just based off the other one, and it should be good. I actually chose to do uh, plain steel. It's cheaper, and I got 10 pounds of it for a 3.30 second that, to be honest, it's gonna take me a long, long time to use, and the 1 16th is a lot more valuable to me. Anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead, do that. Now, is this the best idea? Most definitely not. You should buy the actual carb. What's gonna happen in this machine? Well, I'm gonna use it for a little bit, and then if I have no problems, the plan originally was to sell it. But this is a mower, that I work with a guy on that provides some of these ma machines for me to work on and sell. So I very well might just buy it from him at the price that he would be receiving anyway. Um, I don't know, I'll have to get back to you on that one. But this is probably gonna be at least two or three weeks before this even makes its way on the internet. So I'll probably have a update on the end of the video. So, okay, I feel like we see, keep watching, subscribe. If you have any questions, if you've done this hack job as well, let me know and see if it worked out as well for you. But so far, I'm actually pretty impressed. Just a shortening of the linkage seemed to work out too fine. You know, the material, probably not the 
looks legit, but come on, it's 332nd filler rod. At least it's not coat hanger or something. At least it has a little bit of legitimacy behind it. Okay, catch you in the next video. Have a good night. Subscribe.